Hi everyone, I'm Jim White, and uh, this video is going to be about the Bernoulli Principle. I'm wearing my lab coat because we're going to get a little scientific on you. You've probably seen this demonstration many times, and we're going to get into what is levitating the ball and what is keeping it in place. And I suggest you watch the video uh, listed under the Show More tab, which goes into the theoretical aspects uh, with equations and all that kind of stuff. I promise not to use any equations. Okay, here's the plan. We're going to instrumentate a ping pong ball. We're going to take a metal a uh, piece of tubing and drill holes in the ping pong ball and pass the tubing through it. Now in the middle of this tubing there's a sixteenth of an inch hole that I drilled. This uh, piece of tubing is an eighth of an inch in diameter and I've soldered it closed at that end and it's still open at the other end. So I can insert that through the ping pong ball and then drill a small hole in the ping pong ball here. That represents the hole. So once this is all done and glued together I can connect a piece of silicone tubing like this to the end of the metal tubing. And then I can run that to a pressure measuring device and see what's going on pressure wise on, on the ping pong ball. And we'll be able to rotate the ping pong ball through an airstream. If the airstream is going this way, the hole as it's shown now is on the top and I can rotate it so it's out here at 90 degrees or down here at 180 degrees and we can see what's going on pressure wise as air flows around a ping pong ball. That's the plan. Let's see what happens. This is a homemade manometer which is just uh, a length of plastic tubing clear tubing that's been filled with water with some green food coloring in it and it's uh, looped at the bottom and the pressure that it measures is the difference in these two columns. Now I have a hose attached to one side of the manometer and if I blow into the tube, you can see the levels change. Now since it's water in the tube, uh, one inch difference in height between the two columns is a pressure measurement of one inch of water column. Now it takes 27.7 inches of water column to equal one PSI. So well, that was me blowing air towards the end of the hose. Now, it's common to make uh, inclined manometers to make them more sensitive. So I'm going to turn this thing and lay it down. Okay. Now when I blow into it, you see a much larger uh, differential height there. Now they're not the same height at the moment uh, because the thing isn't quite level. It's sitting at an angle at the base. So 
So that makes a manometer much more sensitive depending on the amount of rise that's involved. If, if we go up one inch here for 10 inches of length, uh, we have a, we've increased the sensitivity by a factor of 10. So that's a uh, quickie lesson on manometers. Here is a table showing uh, many of the popular pressure scales that are in common use. And uh, you can see how you can convert from one scale to another to suit your needs. Okay, here is our test setup. We have a hair dryer held in a vertical position. There's two strips of uh, PC board material with the ping pong ball mounted between them. And there's the hole in the ball. I put a circle around it so that uh, you can see its position. And uh, we sort of have a pointer here to allow us to turn the ball. The pressure sensing hose is connected there and it goes to the manometer to the tube that is the closest to us. So when the tube closest to us moves that way that's positive pressure. When it moves to the left, that's negative pressure. The marks on the paper are one inch apart, so because the slope is uh, one-tenth, that is one unit rise per ten units of horizontal length, a one inch difference between the two columns is equivalent to a tenth of an inch of water column pressure. Now I'm going to turn on the hair dryer with the ball, uh, the hole in the ball pointing straight down. the differential height in the water column. And now I'm going to turn the ball. And you can see the pressure is reduced. And at that point, we've actually gone to negative pressure. So let's keep going. horizontal so when the pointer is horizontal and the hole is towards us we have a pretty good negative pressure there so let's keep going and you can see the negative pressure 
is getting less and less. The moment the hole is straight up, we're essentially back to our atmospheric pressure. Uh, go through it one more time. It's essentially atmospheric pressure on top of the ball. As we bring the hole around towards horizontal, we see a negative pressure. Maximum negative pressure is with the arrow horizontal. And as we come down, getting less and less negative pressure. And uh, right about that point, we're essentially at atmospheric pressure. And as we keep going, now we're into the positive pressure. out there with the, with the hole straight down is our maximum positive pressure. And we turn the air off and we go back to normal atmospheric pressure. Okay, here I've connected a small piece of brass tubing that's been bent at a 90 degree angle roughly that's now attached to the manometer so I'm going to turn on the air dryer and show uh, the pressure when it's blowing directly into the tubing and when we're blowing across the end of the tubing and when the tubing is pointing up in the airstream. Okay, when we're pointing down, you can see by the manometer that we have a positive pressure. In fact, uh, some uh, manometers are used to measure velocity of air uh, with a special probe. And as we get further away from the uh, nozzle of the hairdryer, you see we have a lower pressure due to the lower velocity. having trouble staying in the middle of the airstream. Okay, that's a positive pressure. Now when we turn this on its edge, you see we go to a negative pressure. And it's most negative when we're down close. As we get up into the lower velocity areas, there's less negative pressure. Now if we turn the probe upside down and put it into the airstream, you can see we have a slight negative pressure.
and there's positive pressure in the air impinging directly on the end. You get a negative pressure when air is shooting across the end. And we get a slight negative pressure when air is parallel to the tube that's uh, going past the end of the tube. Okay, from our pressure measurements, we should now know what is levitating the ball. There's a high pressure area on the bottom of the ball due to the air impinging on it. This is called the stagnation pressure, and it's essentially atmospheric pressure above the ball. Now let's uh, make some more measurements and find out what's holding the ball in the airstream. Okay, up till now we've had the ball centered in the airstream. Well, what happens if the ball tries to get out of the airstream uh, by moving this way or that way? And let's measure some pressures and see. Okay, if the ball comes this way, Yeah, we still have a negative pressure on the, this back side of the ball. But over on this side, we're essentially at atmospheric pressure. So there's a negative pressure behind the ball that wants to suck it back into the airstream. There's ambient pressure and there's a negative pressure that wants to pull the ball back into the airstream. Well, here's a uh, another demonstration of uh, Bernoulli's principles. This is a funnel with a hose attached and our ping pong ball again. And I'm going to blow down onto the ping pong ball and let's watch what happens. Let's try it again. So in this case, the air velocity is very high at the beginning of the funnel and slows down as it comes out of the funnel. So there's a negative pressure that pulls the ball up into the funnel. Now I know there is no such thing as suction. It's forced up by the higher pressure outside the funnel. Once it's up at the top of the funnel, the high velocity air streaming past it keeps it in place. And uh, I think you saw some spinning action there. So there's a, another demonstration of Bernoulli's principles. Here's another demonstration uh, using a ping pong ball. I put dots on it to make it easier to see. And it's uh, constrained inside three rods. Because I'm tired of chasing it all over the place. But it's not held, it's just uh, captive there. And uh, here I have a metal plate at, the, at a height uh, above the... the uh, the ball itself and I'm going to blow air across that plate and see if it will lift the uh, ping pong ball. Okay, here we go. And you 
can see. It lifts it up very nicely. Okay, we've uh, learned a lot about ping pong balls in airstreams now. And uh, but, uh, what about uh, the actions of, of water? Uh, the Bernoulli principle applies to fluids, uh, of liquids like water, just as well. And I have a little demonstration uh, set up in our hydrodynamics laboratory. So let's go over there and take a look at it. Okay, here is our hydrodynamics laboratory. Some people call it a sink. And the first thing we need to do is to measure the force of the water coming from the spigot. And we'll do that using this balance beam here. Uh, the water will impinge on the end of this and then I'll use a a weight which I'll move back and forth to try and roughly gauge the force of the water stream on this end. Now this is a hair out of balance but there's a number eight washer and not even at the end it pulls it back. Here's our uh, balance beam uh, sitting in the sink and let's uh, find the point where the water can lift the weight. Okay, right there it's lifting the weight. And I hope you can see it that the water is lifting the weight at that point. Our weight is 332 grams and the ratio of the arm lengths was roughly uh, 2 to 1. So that means the water was impinging the end of the stick with a force of 166 grams. Now we're going to use that stream of water to raise an aluminum plate weighing 220 grams uh, through some water. Well, I hope you were amazed as I was by that last demonstration. I discovered it by accident while washing a plate of acrylic material. Well, I hope uh, you have a better understanding of the Bernoulli principle now through these demonstrations. And uh, if you got anything out of the, the video, uh, consider clicking the thumbs up and maybe subscribing. Uh, the next video that I'm working on is about magnetothermodynamics, uh, MHD, and uh, it'll have some demonstrations of the principles of MHD 
and rail guns. So uh, please subscribe. It's free, you know.